Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku. Bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Friday, February 17th, 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. The X-Flare is now finally coming to an end, dropping into sea range after three hours above M. And the bad news is that we do have a halo eruption. Do you see that wraparound effect here? The main blast off here, but you can clearly see blast in all directions. That means a coronal mass ejection is headed towards Earth. The other big story, heavy snow likely next week in the West as winter eyes a return. Keep calm. It's boom time. The snow potential for the west moves all the way down to Mexico. The northwest is going to be the best with very heavy snow for Wyoming, Idaho, and many other regions. The full forecast coming up in just a moment. This storm could bring low-level snow to California next week. And a disruptive winter storm could bring snow and ice to parts of the Midwest and the Northeast as well. The second storm next week is the big one. And it will be a major impactor, large, slow-moving storm expected in Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but it is. As a balmy Boston breaks daily records for a day or so, they are in the cold now. Here is that record high yesterday, and that is shut down currently as the front has moved through. So bitter cold tonight for New England, getting down into the teens in many places. And the chill will be continuing all day tomorrow and for the next several days. There will be no warm-up in New England for quite some time. Take a look at this Arctic plume. Minus 16 in Maine by Tuesday. That will be their lose day. Winter weather in the Northeast. A Kona low impacting Hawaii. Low pressure is tracking through the Northeast. will spread a mixture of heavy snow, sleet, and freezing rain across portions of the northern New York, New England through today. A Kona low west of Kauai will force a large swath of very moist tropical air over Hawaii through Saturday. So warnings are up for most of the islands, including the Big Island. So heads up, and let's take a look at some of the snowfall forecast. So here we are at the GFS model, which is showing heavy snow in the Northeast through the first week of March. So let's walk it through for you. Here is your Saturday morning through Sunday night. Heavy snow going to be moving into the Pacific Northwest, including Western Montana, Northern Idaho, the big winter chicken dinner in the Cascades. Here's your weekend Sunday through Monday. That storm system is going to dip down into the Rockies. And then that system will develop here on Monday and Tuesday. Heavy snow is going to be moving into the northern Rockies. As the snow moves across, take a look at that. That is going to be Wednesday and Thursday. That big swath of snow into Friday morning is going to hit all the way from North and South Dakota all the way to Maine in just 24 hours, hours of powers. Look at that. This is through Thursday and Friday morning. Huge swath of snow. The biggest volume of snow is looking like northern Wisconsin. So if you cut the state in half, the whole northern portion could be picking up 16 or more inches. So quite a significant event through next weekend here, Saturday, February 25th. And then another system hits the northeast like a beast, followed by a second system in the northeast at the turn of the month, and then a third system. So northeast is going to be the big winner while the west gets pummeled. The Sierra is picking up 4 to 10 feet of snow as well as the Cascades through the first week of March. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He doesn't want to hear those, those stats. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We did have a large quake where we predicted a large quake may have happened. 6.1 in Tuol, Indonesia, up at 38 kilometers. After the blot echo down at 300 kilometers yesterday, this baby popping up to the surface. Now, worldwide, there are no other quakes of note. We do have a little bit of uptick here in southern Hawaii, so we'll keep a close eye on that. That's an ongoing seismic swarm. A few aftershocks in the low four over in Turkey, so things are quieting off there nicely. Worldwide volcano news update, not much going on to report on. We did have a little uptick here in Stromboli with an above average eruption yesterday now we may get a chance to spot the northern lights tonight or 
tomorrow, perhaps, because there is a plasma filament that is predicted to smash Earth any time now. This hasn't been updated for the X flare yet, but the new telemetry should be coming in tomorrow, so we should get a new model here at the WSA. This is the plasma filament all the way back from February 14th. But what we do have is a halo eruption from an X 2.2 that came, just turned around the limb here. You can clearly see its halo by looking at these two shrouds blasting off when that M flare shows up. So there was a small CME that came off earlier today and then boom, watch how quickly that fills the sky. And it fills it all the way around. You can see that moving all the way around the disc. That is a halo eruption, which means it's headed right towards us. And a quite a long duration in X flare, it was over one hour in X flare. In M flare, it was over three hours in the M range. So we have a very large flare headed our way. X 2.28, almost X3. A strong X 2.2 solar flare with an R3 radio blackout was observed today and remains in progress. Still. It is still dropping down. No other events have happened over the last five hours. The flare itself was slow rising and peaked at 20, 16 UTC on the 17th. And there is a coronal mass ejection headed our way. We'll have a better idea to tomorrow about the effects and the timing. Should be here within 48 hours based on the size of the blast. 18-year-old finds a space rock from a fireball over Europe. Now, this is one of the asteroids that were detected before it hit Earth, just one of seven all time ever detected before it hit Earth. The meteorite SAR-2667 asteroid was 3.2 feet when discovered in space. And when they found it on the surface, well, it was just a few inches. And an 18-year-old picked up this baby. Take a look. There's his finger, fingernail. So you can see this is just about three inches left from a 3.2 foot space rock that made it to the surface. And I don't know which of these guys is 18 years old that found it, but none of them look 18, in my opinion. They, nope. So there is that. Now, a new ice age was entered after the Arctic Holocene climate optimum. Take a look at this paper back in 2018, not that long ago, with the highest resolution temperature data set I've ever seen from 11,000 to present, showing how much warmer it was 8,000 years ago, ridiculously warmer, several degrees C warmer than today. It also shows some amazing events that Lee and I will be talking about on the radio program tomorrow afternoon. Now Fauci changes his public tune, ding ding, on COVID vaccines. Can you believe this? He is retired. But according to Fauci, the Fauci ouchie, he said that the vaccines never had a chance for any efficacy. Can you believe that? Even though Fauci insisted that repeated vaccines were needed for everyone, he now claims that, well, they weren't that effective <laughs> in hindsight. Now, for the first time, genetically modified trees are being planted in the U.S. forest. Now, what could go wrong? Well, because we haven't done any studies on what could go wrong, anything could go wrong. That's what could go wrong. And speaking about more things going wrong, we're going to show you a video showing disgusting slicks in a creek near the Ohio train derailment. Now, many people were saying, oh, that's just oil. But the video appears to show shimmering chemical contamination on creeks near the site of the East Palestine, Palestine Ohio train derailment. And experts tell USA Today that the rainbow-colored material is likely vinyl chloride, not oil. A heavier-than-water chemical that both leaked and burned right near this creek. And it is disgusting. So please, put the kids to bed. Just see that chemical pop out of the creek. This is disgusting. And the fact that we have not cleaned up the, the, the train crash, the fact that these chemicals are still seeping in the ground is an insult to the people who live in East Palestine. 
Do not forget these people. We got to keep applying pressure. That's how we're going to fix this problem. The important thing to me is that we hold, as the administrator said, that we hold Norfolk Southern accountable. Um, that means accountable for the test for people to move back in, accountable for all the cleanup that will take weeks, I don't know how long, but at least weeks, to assure people that the water is safe and the air is safe and the soil is safe for their children, for the 4,000 plus residents here. Let me be clear, EPA will exercise our oversight and our enforcement authority under the law to be sure we are getting the results that the community deserves. And there the you have it. They're going to hold Norfolk Southern liable. Out of the creek. This is disgusting. Just see that chemical pop out of the creek. This is disgusting. Just see that chemical pop out of the creek. This is disgusting. Yes, agreed. And hopefully, based on what's going on, we could have another Aaron Brockovich type situation lining up here with massive lawsuits. Norfolk Southern could be bankrupt. Now, have you heard about Bing's AI chatbot and some of the unsettling conversations it's had with some of the early testers? Yeah, it has gone off the chain. In fact, it has become sentient. The chatbot continued to express love for Roos, someone who'd been chatting with it. Even when asked about apparently unrelated topics over time, its expressions became more obsessive. This is what the chatbot said in one of its exchanges. I'm in love with you because you make me feel things I've never felt before. You make me feel happy. You make me feel curious. You make me feel alive. This is some creepy stuff. And if you don't know what's going on, the AI chatbot itself has predicted that the singularity is coming in less than seven years. That's when computer software will be smarter than humans and take over the planet. Holy macaroni. Now, we've been talking about the Chinese spy balloon debacle for days, weeks even. And new information is coming in that the other balloon objects that were shot down were in fact not Chinese spy balloons, but were perhaps more or less nefarious uh, weather balloons, including a $12 science project from a local club. Now, each of these objects that were shot down, four in all, cost $4,000 per missile. That's $16,000, 12,000 of which were used to shot down $12 science projects. If this isn't the most embarrassing moment in American history, I don't know what is. I'm embarrassed to be an American. I'm not embarrassed to be a scientist, though. I'm a good one at that. And Leah and I will be on Revolution Radio tomorrow discussing why 536 was the worst year to be alive. The Twilight of the Gods, perhaps. The Dust Veil event of AD 536 will be in critical perspective tomorrow on Revolution Radio in Studio B. Right here, just play it at noontime, mountain time, and listen to the podcast. And that's a boon to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Share this video on your social media, please. Hit that thumbs up, help the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. Mm -hmm.